comes a time at which the old must step down and the new must step in, as is the case with this fire alarm control panel. As you can see, I've already started pulling wires, but it's been a trusty panel for me for many years in its various renditions that I've made of it. However, the series of homemade panels is ceasing to exist with a very, very exciting addition to my collection. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I got. So I feel this video will benefit more from me holding the camera rather than setting it up on a tripod. But this is what I have. There's my hand for comparison. So there's something quite large in this box. And I'm quite excited to show you guys what exactly it is I managed to pick up for $100 plus shipping. Let's just go ahead and start cutting into this. Let's see what we got. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, mainly because I'm filming this by hand rather than on a tripod. But we'll see what becomes of the video. seems to be kind of working. This tape is definitely secure. It's not going anywhere. Now, there will be additions to this video. This is not going to be just the unboxing. This is going to be quite a lengthy video because I'm going to show you my adventures with this device and this new control panel. Show you just exactly how in the world I made it work, if it ever works. I might blow it up in the process, who knows? Hopefully I don't. Because that would be a hundred dollars down the drain that I don't have to go ahead and spend on another control panel. So hopefully, with any luck, I'm gonna do this all right and everything's gonna work. Now, we're into the box. I already see there's plastic sitting here with bubbles. So yeah, I need to spin this a little bit. You can already see it's starting to show itself. But, the secret you've all been waiting for, that only three people knew about prior to this, yeah, it's a firelight panel. But, it's not just any. It's one where the door's completely separated. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can't see under there. Maybe you can. It's got a UD on it what it could be. It is the Firelight MS5 UD. Five zone conventional control panel. I finally have a real panel that's supposed to work. I'm not going to say anything yet until I have this installed. This is brand new according to the listing. It was installed once and then removed prior to use because the uh, the owner didn't want to use this panel and chose something else. So because of that, I wound up with this thing for a whopping $100. Brand new. So, yeah. I'll go ahead and put the door back on later and show everything all together. But just looking around, everything looks to be in good condition. There are some terminal blocks missing, but I do have spares. So that's not to worry. I can I can fix that pretty easily. I do have some end of lines, so that's good. I'll get to mess around with those. Uh, there is not a battery harness, but I can take care of that quite easily. I'm sure there are replacements available for very cheap. But as you can see, everything is intact. And there is the label. It's an MS5UD3. So... It does put out FWR from what I'm told, but that's no worries. Unfortunately, now that I have 24 volt NACs, some of my 12 volt alarms will no longer function, such as the Commander 3 or the Mass, but I can order new ones. It's not something I'm terribly worried about. So yeah, 
next step is going to be taking this out and figuring out how in the world I'm going to get it to work. So come along for the adventure because this is just the beginning of the video. Well, it's time for the next step of the adventure. We have power. Let's see if this thing works, shall we? It would appear that it does. Is that all? All right, let's look at all the troubles. So we have an open circuit on zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. Zone five shows doesn't show one because it has a resistor over it still. There's no battery. There's a power supply sink fault, which again, there's no resistor, so that's to be expected. That's it. So all the troubles here are pretty much expected. Um, I kind of want to play around in the menus a little bit. So let's take a look in the modes. And let's go into programming mode. Let's see. Default password does work. Shows a trouble that we're in programming mode. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the history. View events. That's it. View alarms. So there were some alarms earlier. But these are nothing I have done because, as you can see, there's nothing wired up. So none of this is my fault. I swear I didn't do it. We escape out of the history. Uh, system setup. Time and date, of course, are going to be off until I have a battery set up. Canadian options off. Trouble remind off. Charger disable. Let's do that. Escape. Escape. No, wait. I forget how to program this. Set up. Recharger disable. And then is there an enter key? Uh, as you can see, I'm not very good at this. How do I save the configuration? forget how to do this. Oh, it's just escape. Version 3.1, B2, so I don't have to use PPU wizard. Alright, I'm gonna see. Yeah, it still shows no battery even though I disabled it. So, there's not a whole lot I can do there unless I do the battery hack trick, which is wiring the resettable power into the battery there. Not the end bus. That would go really, really bad. Um, yeah. Everything seems fine otherwise. So, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should hook up a couple alarms and see what happens, you know? So, I'm going to shut this off and get PS Tools downloaded and see if I can't get some programming done on this, because I do have a 15-foot USB cable for this, so this should make it pretty easy um, for when I go ahead and start programming this from across the room, because it's going to have to go into the closet, and my desktop's up there, so there's not a whole lot of an option there. But for now, it's off, so I'll be back in a little bit. All right, continuing every step of the way with you guys. We've got a couple devices hooked up. So for a pull station on zone one, I have the ADT3403. And then for an alarm on both NAC1 and NAC2, I have the Siemens UMHU MCS. So I do need to go in and program this. I need to program NAC1, enabled yes. Silence, no. It'll be non-silenceable. And then coding will be steady, because NAC 1's going to be the strobes. And we'll escape. NAC 2, we'll change the coding to March time. That will be silenceable. And yeah, so that should be good. Input zones, zone one. 
that's enabled. Uh, let's put verification on. It will let me. No. Am I not allowed? No. Okay, fine. We'll play later. And then let's go ahead and save. And see if I blow something up. As soon as we acknowledge our troubles. Alright. Let's see what happens. Okay. So you don't play nice with March time. I I, I see that. So think it plays nicely with panel coding at all. I forgot. It doesn't... It, it has a delay, so... Shut up. You're okay. Alright, well... Let's see, what else can we do? Um, back into programming... Escape, Mac 2, enable coding. Oh, it's too bad there's no semen sync. <laughs> Be nice. Oh, we have two stage. Let's do two stage for that. Escape, Let's save. Very quiet now that I put my finger over it. Let me in. Alright. This is really loud. Let's try this. loud. I'm not used to the uh, the 24 volt power on this yet. Mm. All right. I kind of want to switch out um, notification appliances for something a little easier to code. All right. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and switch out to a uh, an, uh, an appliance that can actually be coded. So, give me a few minutes. Alright, third time recording this clip. Maybe I'll get it right. We're back. This time with the EST Integrity. Um, I do have Mac 2 set back to March time. So, without further ado, let's see if it actually... No, I want to put a delay on that zone, though. Okay, uh, input zone, zone 1. Edit three verification. I want a verification. I must just not be good at this. Uh, no, forget any of this. I'll figure it out in PS Tools eventually. It's still downloading. It's quite a large file. All right, shall we? a little odd. Why is the integrity not going off? Did I disable the NAC? I don't hear anything weird. Set the station. Hush. It's very loud. I'm going to have to take care of that. Okay, uh, back into programming. Uh, NAC 2 is enabled, so I must have this wired incorrectly. Silenceable, yes. Okay, escaped that. NAC 1, coding steady, which is correct. 
and it's non-silenceable because it's the strobe neck. All right, well, I need to go ahead and figure out what's up with the integrity, figure out why the horn's not working. So I'll be back with that. Always wants more. You know, I'm pretty sure the integrity would much prefer it if I try to set it off in March time with the temporal um, jumper removed. So that's why I didn't do anything wrong except for not removing the jumper. Let's see if it actually does it this time. Wow, not only do I have a strobe now, I have March time. Let's reset it and leave it alarm. This is actually kind of fun. I want to see how long it takes it to go off again. That's really cool. I know. Already silenced. I can reset. I like how I got the strobe going again. Okay, let's go into programming. Two, Mac two, coding. What do we got? We have steady march time, California temporal, two stage three minutes, two stage five minutes, sync for a bunch of stuff that I don't have. Uh, yeah, I guess the second page of sync I don't have either. So let's play with temporal just for the heck. I can't wait to get this set up. This is going to be awesome. I only have to completely redo the system to make it work. So, yeah. All right, and let's do a drill. And it's in sync. Can I do a real alarm? Now it's not synced anymore. But I like that I have strobes. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. Next step, we're going to try a walk test. Play around with that. This video is going to be pretty long simply because I'm getting used to this. Uh, shoot, what was I doing? Is it, where is it? Is it system setup? No. No. It's here somewhere. Ah, found it. Let's do an audible. Hush. Okay, that was weird. It's probably because all the zones are wide open. Well, walk test ain't going to work for now, so we'll play with that later. Uh, at least this, I have coding options now. It's kind of cool. Two enabled coding. Let's do two stage three minutes. I like listening to all the little relays click. It's kind of fun. Okay, we're good. All right. Let's see how two stage works. Okay, let's see. Will it let me put it into a full evac? No? No? Go away. Um, 
Yeah. I should probably listen to that fire call. I'll be back. All right. Well, continuing. I have PS tools now. So, yay, there's that. That is powered back up. Um, the reason I had to leave in the clip was that there was a structure fire call out that I wanted to listen to. So, I did pull all the alarms off of it for now. Um, I have my giant USB cable. So, I'm going to get this thing ready to program. Well, it would appear that it's time for this fire alarm control panel and all the remnants of the system that it controlled to go in favor of the MS5UD and a brand new system. But, unfortunately, I can't give it the send-off I really want to because I'm confined to the restrictions of this charging cable for my old camcorder. I felt that since I can put this on a tripod that it would be better for showing you the replacement and upgrade process. So, the only thing that's left to do here is to set it off one more time. And unfortunately, I can't really show the rest of the system, but you'll get the idea of what's what's up there. So, I feel like it's time to set it off one last time. One final reset. Alright, time to power this thing down and dismantle it enough to pull it off the wall. There are screws behind this back box, um, and I don't believe the other two back boxes have any screws behind them, so I think it'll just be this box that I need to worry about. But unfortunately, that is the main control head of the system, so that will require dismantling the panel pretty extensively in order to remove it from service, but maybe one day I'll bring this into service. I'll keep everything intact as best as I can. Um, I won't be pulling any of this wiring out except for the main harnesses and the power supply, but I'll try and keep everything intact as best as I can. So if I wanted to, I could just hang it back up and run it again, but we'll see what happens. So with that, it's time to go ahead and power this thing down. That's what it looked like after every system test. So I have with me the tools of destruction. This panel is powered down. Um, I unplugged it because I do want my light to run while I'm working in here. Not just for me, but for you guys as well so you can see. But it's time to take the main power harness out. And in case you were ever wondering, this left side terminal block was the power distribution for everything. Um, it was where the main 12 volt power supply came into the system, and it's it's dead now, it's unplugged. But it came in and this terminal block provided power to everything inside the control panel where it was distributed to like the LEDs. All of these were 12 volts. They had a resistor built into them and they were wired as such, so they're all 12 volts. The lights inside my switches were all 12 volts. So this 12 volt power supply kept everything going, which was the main reason why this entire panel couldn't be upgraded to 24 volts. If I was capable of it, I would have done it. However, that would have required a step down transformer so that everything inside the panel wouldn't get fried the moment you turn it on. This relay is also a maximum of 14 volts. So 24 volts kind of would have killed it. But yeah, so I'm just gonna keep working while I talk to you guys. Um, this right side terminal block was the data block, I guess you could call it. It was where everything in the system connected to the panel. So the main harness going out to everything connected in here. And let's see, I don't think, yeah, there's nothing on that end terminal. So this main wiring harness that went out to all the devices and the junction box came through that terminal block. And now this panel is completely disconnected. I'll have to go through and pull all the staples out of the board for the power supply cable and the harness, but there was also a little junction down in here 
um, because I didn't have enough cat sticks at the time I built this system to make one giant harness. So that junction does need to go away as well. Um, but I'm going to pull these cables out and pull this junction out here, and I'll give you a progress update after that. Alright, so the panel is free both of its door and all the wiring harnesses coming off of it. Um, I removed the junction, and this is the main cable line that goes out to the system. Um, I guess I can go over my color code a little bit. I never disclosed that to you guys. Blue was the normally closed circuit going out to all the initiating devices. Um, let's see, where is it? White blue was the normally open for initiating devices. Let's see, I believe brown was an extra negative line going out to the smoke detector. Uh, white brown was horn, and white orange was strobe. So, yeah, kind of simple, but it was pretty much a three-wire system because I used to jump the initiating device uh, normally closed, or actually normally open, and it made it kind of easy to not have to run separate lines for strobe and horn positive, even though I could have. I never did. But, yeah. Next step is going to be getting this beast off of the wall somehow. So I probably need to open this first and pull it out before I pull the four screws out of it. So we'll see what happens. Well, I guess it would be appropriate for me to show you what the inside of the main control fascia used to be. So that way you guys can see what it was I struggled to build and maintain all these years. Um, yes, it was all done with alligator clips because it was the easiest method for putting this together without soldering to a breadboard, which in hindsight would have been a good idea, but I never did. Um, you can see all of the Cat6 lines that ran down into this from the power distribution and whatnot, and I fought with this thing many times to make sure all the LEDs would function, mainly because all of the alligator clips in there would come popping loose the moment I would close the box, so this is definitely something that I'm looking forward to getting rid of in my panel, so that way everything is solid state. But back in here, behind one of these lines, um, I don't know if I can show it, yeah there it is, that little glint of silver way back there is the screw that holds this to the both the case and to the board. There's another screw hole back there that I used to hold this together. It's not bolted on to the chassis like these two are from the old power supply bolts. So these can stay intact, this cannot. So I'm going to have to pull this down before I can pull anything else out. Okay, so I closed this back up to hold everything in. I don't want to dismantle it if I don't have to because it's a lot of rewiring to do. But I have taken out that screw and that screw and loosened the top too, so in theory, it should just lift right off like that. And there's the board that everything used to sit on. And, you know, I don't think I ever showed you guys just how this mounted to the wall exactly. So I'll show you now. This just lifts right off. This whole wooden board that everything's mounted to. And it has a uh, commercial grade picture frame hanger. So this rests on this bracket here on the wall and keeps me from having to put any more holes in the wall except for the two that hold the bracket up. So that's how I mounted it. So I believe the next step is going to be pulling all the devices off the system and removing all of the wiring. So we'll go ahead and get that started. So I managed to pull all the devices that were on the system off of it, and now the only job left is to pull all the wiring out. So I have to undo that junction. I have to uninstall this box because there will be a new one in place of it here soon. Actually, a little more light here if I open up the closet. There. So yeah, this junction box is going away and being replaced with something better. So I also need to pull out this old line take all the lines that go out into the hall, remove those. So, next step is pulling cable and coiling it away to put it away. Well, this is going way worse than planned. 
I tried to take the little jumper cable that went over to the MIZ normally out and these leads came right out with it so yeah I'm gonna have to keep working. So for those of you who ever wanted to know what the junction box looked like this is how messy it truly was inside with that little four pin terminal block in there. So yeah and then a light switch to control the hallway audible. But seeing as I have four knacks now, I can control the hallway audible straight from the panel, so this whole switch assembly isn't going to be necessary anymore. But I do have other plans in mind for the junction box, so we'll see how that goes. Then I'm going to continue pulling more cable out and going from there. Alright, all the cable from every single spot has been pulled. The junction box is gone. The blue line is missing entirely. There's nothing going out here into the hallway. So, yeah, it's all piled up here. Um, this is the extent of the wire that ran the system for many years, and now it's time to begin the installation of this control panel and to see what exactly I can get set up today. Alright, so I have begun the extensive process of wiring the system and I have installed the back part of the new junction box and I'm currently working on getting everything wired in the way it needs to be. Um, this bottom block will be for the hallway and this top will be for the bedroom and there will be two main lines coming in on this middle part of the wired mold box. And then eventually, if all goes to plan, it should look something like this in the end, with one line coming in and what looks like three going out. But yeah, working on it slowly but surely. I think my next step is going to be to run the lines going in between stuff in the bedroom and start stripping the ones out in the hall so they're ready to go. But yeah, in case you're wondering, I did upgrade from, well, it's not an upgrade, but it is a change. Hold on, I can't see my camera screen. There. Now you guys can't see it, but it is Cat 5e cable now. Um, the Cat 6 at Lowe's was ridiculously expensive, so I went with this nice kind of gray Cat 5e, and hopefully it works. Um, all the twisted pairs are the same colors as before. So I do have my little unified color codes going here that I'm working on. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the smoke detector in the bedroom. I haven't accounted for that yet. Uh, zone 3 will probably cover that, but I need to work on that later. So, yeah, that's where I'm at several hours later. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Alright, well, it has been a little bit later in the day. Um, I've done quite a bit of work. I haven't filmed some of it. So I think it's time to give you a little update as to what I've done. Uh, in here, I do have the MS5UD all nice and mounted. I have everything installed and it's screwed to the board, nice and secure. And I did punch out the first two knockouts on the can. So yeah, I got to do that. Um, and I do have a couple little Romex clips in there to keep the cables from getting chewed up by the sharp metal. But yeah, this is all mounted and everything. I also have some of the lines running to the panel. I have one of two. This one will feed to the hallway, and I need to run one more cable identical to it to feed to the um, bedroom. And basically what I have been doing down here in the junction box is I have wired up the cable coming from the bedroom, well coming from the junction box to the bedroom devices, that's all wired up. I have the cable going into the hall wired into the hall's terminal block, so I do need to run the bedroom's cable to cover the zone and the NAX. I have this pull station up, so I've run this wire and have it all connected and junctioned in there. I am working on cable management as you can see. Out in the hall, I haven't really done anything as far as stripping wire yet or cable management, but those lines are run independent of each other, so there's fewer junctions to deal with. But, yeah, so next step is running one more line, finishing up the junction box, and 
starting to tie it all into the panel, so see what I can do. All right, so now that the panel is all wired up, um, I have AC power ready. I have uh, NACs 1 and 2 wired up. I have Zone 1 and Zone 2 wired up, and I have NACs 3 and 4. I just need to finish running the cable going out to the bedroom section of the junction box, and then it should be wired up in here, ready to go for me to start finishing up all the junctions out in the rest of the system. So yeah, we'll see where this goes. Well, continuing on with our little adventure, I've made some progress in wiring up the boxes out there. Uh, both the pull stations are completely wired in. I have stuff installed in there for a later time. Um, I'm just working on the bedroom notification appliance. I'm honestly thinking that for now I'll leave the little side expansion box, that little single gang box that the MIZ always hung out on, um, empty for now until I can figure out a wiring situation for that because I will want to add that in the future but it's not something urgent. I'm also not going to be adding the smoke detector yet. Um, I do think I will have to bring back one of the 2400s since it's a two-wire detector instead of a four-wire detector but I'm not sure yet. I have to read up and do my learning as to how in the world I wire such things up so for now Everything seems to be done. I'm not going to test the system on camera for this. I'm going to do that off camera and save all the system test stuff and everything for an actual video. So that way I'm not giving you a two for one here. I want you guys to have a full video just about this and how everything works. So there will be a full long video explaining everything and also functioning as a system test. So. I think that'll be it for this part of the video. I don't think there's much more I want to show. Um, if there is, I'll certainly film it, but for now, I think it's safe to say we can go ahead and close this up. Now, one thing I have noticed with this panel is that the can is slightly bent, and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to have to look into fixing that because I do have to lift the door up a little bit to lock it. And as you can see, it doesn't quite sit center here. So I'm going to have to see what it is, but yeah, I think we're ready to go. So I'll finish up the rest of the work and bring you guys along in the next system test. So thank you guys for following me along on this adventure in getting this panel in place. This is something I've waited for for a very long time, and I'm glad to finally have this as a piece of my collection. So I can't wait to start making system tests with it, but i got to make sure I don't blow it up first. So. I'll see you guys in the next video, and that'll be it. See ya.